Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make your own well-worn presidential button. This document is 1920 by 1080 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Double-click the background. We'll rename it BKG for background. Go to View and make sure rulers and snap are checked. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up your transform tool. Go to the ruler, click and drag out a line to the center. It'll snap in place because we have snap checked. Go to the top ruler and repeat it. Then press enter or return. Call up your gradient tool and click on the gradient box. Click on the foreground to background thumbnail and click on the lower left stop. Click on the color box and type in 65% for brightness. Click OK and click on the lower right box. Click on the color and choose black. Close the gradient editor, go to the center and drag out a line to the right and release. Click on the new layer icon to make a new layer and call up your elliptical marquee tool. Go to the center and press shift and alt or shift and option and drag out a circle. Click on the new layer icon to make a new layer. Then click on the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the empty layer. Click on the empty layer to make it active, and then click on the foreground color. We'll choose a dark blue. I'm using 2C407F. Then press Enter or Return. To fill this layer with the color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Call up your rectangular marquee tool and drag out a rectangle across the top half. Click on the foreground color, and this time we'll choose a red. I'm using FF412E. Fill the selection with the color, and then delete the selection. Go to the center and press Alt or Option and drag out a rectangle approximately this size. Let's fill the inside of the selection with white, and since white is our background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Delete the selection. Call up your elliptical marquee tool and go to the center and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag out a circle approximately this size. Fill it with white and delete the selection. Go to the circular layer mask and press Ctrl or Command as you click on it. This will call up its selection. With the layer active, press Ctrl or Command plus J to cut the selection from the image and copy it to its own layer. We can now trash the layer under it since we don't need it anymore. Double click on the layer to call up its layer style window. Click Inner Glow and change the blend mode to Linear Burn. Click on the small color box and change the color to black. I'll make the opacity 36% and the size 35 pixels. Keep in mind, depending on the size and resolution of your document, you may want to adjust these numbers. Click Drop Shadow. Make the opacity 29%, the distance 30 pixels, and the size 29 pixels. Let's add a highlight near the top left edge that will give the surface of our button a reflective shine effect. Go to the layer and press Ctrl or Command to call up its selection, and then go to Select and Transform Selection. Go to a corner and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag in just a little bit. Press Enter or Return and then press Q to make the selection into a quick mask. Call up your elliptical marquee tool. Go to the center and drag out a circle past the quick mask. Call up your move tool and drag the selection down and to the right a little bit inside the quick mask. Fill the selection with a quick mask, delete the selection, and make the quick mask back into a selection. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. We'll feather it by 8 pixels. Fill it with white and delete the selection. Open the document of the person you'd like to place on the button. We need to make a selection around the head so we can cut it out from its background. There are many ways to do this, so choose the method that's the easiest and most effective for you. For this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. I'll use four pixels. I'll click and drag down inside the head and body. To remove areas of the selection, press Alt or Option and click inside. 
To get your photo into your button document, click down anywhere on your image and drag it up onto your button tab and then with your mouse or pen still held down, drag it down onto the button and release. Click off the eyeball of the photo to hide it and call up the selection of your circular shape. Go to Select and Transform Selection. Transform it down a little past the white circle then press Enter or Return. Make a layer mask and then click off the chain link. This will allow you to move the photo or the layer mask independently of each other. Make the photo visible and active. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up your transform tool and then resize and reposition your photo. Let's remove all the color from it. Press Ctrl Shift U or Command Shift U on a Mac. We'll hide the guidelines by pressing Ctrl or Command plus H. Make your foreground and background colors default to black and white and go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open up the sketch folder and choose Halftone Pattern. We'll choose 2 for the size, 0 for the contrast, and the pattern type is Dot. It's a bit too dark so we'll press Ctrl or Command plus L to call up our Levels window and I'll slide the input highlight to 192. Keep in mind your photo may or may not need adjusting. Click on your adjustment layer icon and choose color balance. Click on this clipping mask icon. This will make this adjustment layer affect only the one layer beneath it, which is the photo. If we don't click it, the adjustment layer will affect all layers beneath it in the layers panel. We'll make the cyan red minus 15, the magenta green 9, and the yellow blue 74. Make sure the midtones are selected and I'm leaving luminosity unchecked. We're ready to set the text. Call up your ellipse tool. At the top, choose Path and click on this icon. We'll choose Circle and check from center. Press Ctrl or Command plus H to reveal your guides. Click on the center and drag out a circle a little past the white. Call up your Type tool and click on the character text box. If you don't see it, go to Window and choose Character. Choose a font. I'm using Cooper Standard Black and click on the color box. Choose White and click OK. Hover your cursor over the path until you see this symbol. Click on the path and type out your text. To make it smaller, highlight it and adjust the size. Click on the layer and press Ctrl or Command plus J to make a copy. Open the Paths panel and click on the Type Path. Now go back to the Layers panel. Press Ctrl or Command plus T to call up the Transform tool and go to a corner and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag out the Transform until the circle is flush with the top of the letters. Then press Enter or Return. Call up your Path Selection tool. Hover your cursor over the path and when you see this line, drag your text around the path to the bottom. To make your text go inside the circular path and go right side up, simply drag your cursor up and inside the path. Your text instantly conforms to it. To replace this text, simply double click on your text layer and type out your words. We can now close the character box. Call up your Move tool and open the Paths panel. Click anywhere in the empty area to hide the path. Open back the Layers panel. I'll apply this texture onto the button to give it a well-worn look. You can download it for free at cgtextures.com. For your convenience, I'll provide a link in the video descriptions area so you can download it directly. To get it into our button document, drag it onto the tab, then into the document and release. Change the Blend Mode from Normal to Multiply. Go to the button shape, press Ctrl or Command and click on it. This will call up its selection. Then click on the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the texture. Click off the chain link and click on the texture to make it active. Now you can reposition your texture. Its layer mask is revealing it inside the button shape while masking out the rest. I'd like to brighten the texture a bit, so I'll press Ctrl or Command L to call up my Levels window. 
I'll drag the input highlights to 232 and click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.